Hello and welcome back. In one of our previous lecture, we had looked at several security aspects as they relate to cloud computing. In this lecture, I will revisit some of those, particularly in context of personal information storage on cloud. We'll look at how you can address this issue by using anonymization techniques. We'll just discuss one example in this lecture. In our previous lecture on security, we have discussed that there is a dependency on the physical, the geographical location of cloud vendors data center, particularly related to the personal information storage. Certain local laws may be applicable to the cloud vendor. For instance, European Union mandates that the personal information can leave the European Union uh, territory only for the jurisdiction that guarantee an equivalent privacy uh, to the to the data. Similarly, some jurisdiction, particularly if you look at United States, uh, they may claim access rights to all the data which is stored inside their territory. One one particular act that's applicable is a U.S. Patriot Act, uh, which can which can allow a government agency, as we have already discussed as well, uh, it can allow a government agency to request access to any store any data that is stored inside the U.S. territory, and they will be able to examine it. So we also looked at how you could avoid this kind of a situation by encrypting your data before you put it on the cloud. So just to revisit that a little bit in a, in a more detail, awareness of the cloud vendor's data center location may not be uh, available to, to the consumers. They may not know where their data is exactly hosted because in order to optimize the resource utilization, the cloud vendor may be choosing the backup locations, for example, automatically without the knowledge of cloud consumers. That is, you as a consumer may not have any awareness of or any control on that where the cloud vendor is storing the backups of all your data. Because in order to provide high availability and reliability to avoid any data loss in case of any disaster situations, the vendor may be required to do regular backups to ensure that the, your, your data is safe. So in, in such scenarios, they have to obviously optimize the resource utilization within their data centers and also adhere to the service level agreements that they have committed to you as a consumer. So in order to do that, they may employ certain algorithms, certain policies, certain mechanisms, which may be doing replication of your data across different geographies. A cloud vendor may be operating its entire data center uh, split into multiple geographic locations and they may be falling in different legal jurisdictions and obviously the local laws of that jurisdiction applied to that data. So in such a case, you may not have much control on how your data is spread across different legal jurisdictions and geographies. And not every cloud vendor may allow you to control how these backups are uh, taken and how these backups are distributed across different regions. So obviously this has some impact on you as a cloud consumer when it comes to the personal information that you store on the cloud storage or cloud infrastructure. So how do you deal with it? One common technique that you can use is anonymization of your personalized uh, personal information that you store. So basic idea here is that you replace the personal information with some tokens and keep the personal information to token mapping local to you and just store the mapped data on a cloud infrastructure. So let's look at an example. Let's say you have some data which looks like uh, uh, this tuple. You may have the individual's name. Let's say this is a key into the data and then you have some sensitive information. For example, the bank account number or any other information like a social security number or any other uh, piece of information which you consider sensitive. But at the same time, this sensitive information in itself may not reveal much. For example, something like 125x1, uh, that in itself may not reveal much. But it becomes useful when it is associated with the individual's identity, which in this case happens to be the person's name, let's say. Now this toge taken together is useful to somebody, but uh, individually they may not be of much use. So in order to anonymize this piece of information, what you do is, that you replace the key with some number which again is chosen by you and the number in itself again may not make much sense. So what you get is something like this. So this tuple which we saw earlier here is replaced by again a different tuple 
which taken together itself won't make much sense because both of these uh, uh, components of this tuple elements of this tuple they are just the numbers now you can store this information safely on cloud because taken together nobody able nobody will be able to make much sense out of it and again this is not encryption all you're doing is anonymizing the data so that it becomes useless uh, when somebody looks at it it is not making much sense in itself and you keep this mapping what we saw anonymization token to the original key mapping you keep it locally and when you want to retrieve the piece of information you do the join with the token table that is you look at the token and then do a reverse lookup that which original user's identity this was belonging to and then you can do a join and figure out what is the actual value of the sensitive data that you are looking at and there may be further optimization to this technique depending upon how much anonymization you want to do how much overheads uh, you can incur because obviously this is an additional uh, join that you have to make to finally reconstruct the original tuple original data tuple uh, so you may have further techniques to optimize this but the basic idea to anonymization remains the same that you replace the key to the information with some token which taken together with the sensitive information does not reveal much does not pose much privacy threat even if somebody uh, gets access to that information so that is pretty much it in this short lecture thank you